a recipe, a family recipe for grandma's pierogi, potato pierogi, which is my mom's recipe, Big Martha. And I just want to make sure that I get the dough right because if the dough's not right, the pierogies won't be right. So break one egg into a big bowl, one beautiful fresh egg from the chickens outside. And so break that up, add one teaspoon of salt. I always like to add that to the egg. Do that. And then your two tablespoons of sour cream. I confess I didn't have any sour cream in, in this COVID crisis. I didn't get to the store today, so I'm using creme fraiche, which is sort of a little richer, a little delicious. So mix that together with one cup of milk. Get that all mixed in. So wet ingredients first, basically. It's just making a soft, beautiful, malleable dough that will encase the fillings. And I made a potato filling, same same filling that my, my mom, Big Martha, would make. Uh, steamed potatoes or boiled potatoes, peeled, uh, mashed with a lot of butter, salt, and pepper. And my mom always added cream cheese, but I didn't have any cream cheese, so I didn't add any cream cheese, but really good. And then this is a mixture of old white cabbage. Uh, when I say old, it's like a dried out head of cabbage that I had, and I made this, it was in the freezer. Uh, you steam the cabbage, you squeeze as much water out of it as you can, and you mix that with cream cheese, salt, and pepper. Boy, is that good, wait till you taste those. Now that's all nicely mixed, and add one cup of water. So that's your liquid for your dough. And now, don't use this to incorporate the flour because it'll get all gummed up. So use um, about four and a half cups of flour. And this is, I already pre-measured. So I'll just add a little bit at a time. And my mom always used a wooden spoon to stir. I don't know why, but that's what she used. No mixers, no nothing, no whisks, a wooden spoon. And just keep adding your flour. I'll use this little bowl to dump it in. And I'm using Hecker's Unbleached White Flour, which is my favorite flour for all purpose. And um, I just like Hecker's, I don't know why. King Arthur's a good substitute for Hecker's if you can't find Hecker's. Let's see, this looks really wet. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's very wet. I'll well, just be at two cups of liquid. So I'm gonna just dump in the whole four and a half cups. What you want is a soft, lovely dough. Oh look, it's coming together nicely. It's not exactly a ravioli dough, but you know, every single country has a dumpling of some sort or other. Empanadas, pierogies, pierogies, raviolis. What do the French have? Hmm, do the French have a dumpling? I don't know about that. But they have their crepes that they wrap around things. So this dough is coming together very nicely. Yeah, it looks just like my mom's. Reminding myself of my mom. You know, the Polish heritage runs strong and deep. Mm. But pierogies are favorite holiday food. We love pierogies. Now it's good to let this rest, but since I am on a sort of a time bind here, I'm gonna to try to do this without resting it too much. I should roll up my sleeves. I'm covered with all kinds of bruises and sores. I got bitten by one of my geese. I got poked by one of the rose bushes that I was trying to prune. You know, during this time, we're spending a lot of time outside, as much time as I possibly can, because I like being outside and I can't go anywhere else, so I might as well just go outside. So scrape. You might have to add a little bit more flour. I didn't add the whole extra. This calls for four and a half to five cups. And it's kind of wet outside today. This is my kitchen. I love my kitchen. It has lots of copper pots. It has a cappuccino machine center over there where people come for their cappuccino. And um, it has a big, wall of ranges. This is all jade ranges, which are so phenomenal. I love them. And I have mealy dishwashers and I have Charleston um, 
refrigerators, a whole bank of refrigerators over there. So it's a semi-professional home kitchen. But you know, all I'm doing all day long now is cooking, cooking, cooking. And I have um, three people staying with me during this time. I have basically locked them in my house and they're um, really helping me a lot. Ryan is holding the camera, he's my gardener. And Carlos, my driver, he's been taking care of the animals with me and really helping out a lot. See how I'm kneading and see how nice it's coming together? Mm, such a good dough. You want an elastic dough that's not wet uh, and that can be rolled out and formed into dumplings. And my favorite pierogies, let's see, cabbage first, potato second, sour cherry, fresh sour cherry, so good. Oh, and another one that's so good are the little sour Italian plums. I uh, take the pit out and put a little sugar where the pit goes um, and um, encase that in this dough and uh, serve it with melted butter. Oh, it's brown butter, it's so good. But it's coming along here. What do you say? Mm. Well, I suppose to rest while you while you create the fillings, but since the fillings are already created, I got smart and I made those ahead of time so it wouldn't take up all day. So now we're going to let this dough just sit like that. Now I'm gonna show you a secret. This is a secret, but I'm gonna just cut part of this dough and put a little flour on the board. This is called bench flour because it's on the bench. Put your dough like this and you don't want it to dry out, whatever you do. So, the secret is put a bowl over it. That way it can't possibly dry out. You see how nicely this is rolling out? Mm-hmm. And that is a little elastic is good because you'll see I'm gonna stretch it as I fill the pierogi. Oh, my dogs are watching. Can you get a picture of, of Bet Noir down there? Look at Bet Noir. <laughs> She's looking, thinking I might be making something with meat. Sorry, Bet Noir. This is a vegetarian dumpling fest that we're having here. I'm using my favorite rolling pin, which I got in Paris on my honeymoon. It's such a beautiful rolling pin. Only good thing about my honeymoon is this rolling pin. Hmm. Okay, so make sure it's not sticking. That's one thing you don't want it sticking. So you can lift it up like that and it's not sticking. And it's doing, it's just doing exactly what it's supposed to do. Thank heavens. So then using a cutter of about two and a half or three inches, Mom always used one of those aluminum um, cold drink glasses. I don't know if you remember those. They came in hideous colors like bright red and bright blue and bright electric green. That's what she used to cut the, um, the dough like this. And now to form the pierogi, I am going to first get my cookie sheet out. I use one of these flour sack towel, see this? And you put that over here and you dust it with a little bit of flour. You can also use cornmeal because that's where you're gonna put your made dumpling on now. I'll do the potato first. So you hold it in your hand like this. See how nice this dough doesn't break. It doesn't do anything bad. And then a nice amount of potato Mound it like this, and then pull the dough up until it touches, like that. Look at that cute little dumpling. Now I like to secure the dough by doing a second twi a little pinch, like that. You do not want them falling apart when you boil them. And these are boiled first, and then you can do whatever else you want with them. But there, that's a nice plump pierogi. Pretty, right? I rolled out my second batch of dough, and now I'm making the cabbage pierogi, my favorite of all. And uh, as I said, it's just fresh cabbage that's old though. It's dried, it's, they turn white when they really get old. And uh, you steam them 
squeeze out all the filling and you usually use like a baby diaper, clean baby diaper or a, or a flour sack towel like that and squeeze out all the excess liquid and then chop it. I do it in the squeezing art, but we used to put it through a meat grinder at home when I was growing up. And that's the filling. It's extremely tasty. And lots of black pepper, lots of cream cheese, and lots of salt. You may not like the sound of it, but I guarantee you would like it to taste it because it's something very special. And when you're making pierogies, either you talk to somebody, somebody like Bobshi, Bobshi Ed, my grandma would sit at the end of the table and she'd be making pierogies. She made them faster than anybody. And um, that was Bobshi Ed. Bobshi is another word for, I think, aunt, Bobshi, or grandma, maybe it's grandma. And, um, and then we had Vuchi Joe, he would come and visit. He was a butcher. And so my humble beginnings just are, remain a very fond memory and a very important part of my life, all of this. The most I ever ate in one sitting was 21 of these. I think I had a stomach ache afterward, but 21 went down very easily because they are really delicious. Okay, so I'll be back to show you how to boil the pierogi and hopefully they will not fall apart and I'll show you how I serve them with browned butter. Yummy. As you take them out, just get off the excess water and then gently put them into your butter dish. You don't want that water on your serving platter. You can see that's a potato, that's a cabbage. You can see the difference in color. Mm. Boy, do these look good. Oh, they look better than any place in Chicago. Forgive me, Kashas. They look better than almost, they look almost as good as my mom's. See, just put the butter on. You're not gonna eat all this butter, but it keeps the pierogi from sticking to each other. There. And now I have to make a few more and then we're ready for dinner.